Hello, everybody. Welcome to Europe PCR 2021. My name is Joost Damond from the Erasmus University Medical Center in Rotterdam, the Netherlands. And today it's a pleasure to be here with Ziad Ali, a friend and colleague from uh, St. Francis Hospital in New York. Ziad? Hi, Joost. Nice to see you. So, Joost, we have a, a fun 10 minutes to talk about uh, new technologies in physiology. So, first of all, I wanted to ask you, why is pre-PCI physiological assessment of importance in the cath lab? And what are some of the drawbacks of currently invasive FFR measurements? So as yet to me, the key reason for the for performing physiological lesion assessment is the fact that simply angiography itself is not reliable. So estimating lesion severity based on angiography alone is, is can be troublesome. We learned from FAME 1 that uh, over 65% of the lesions with the angiographic diameter stenosis of in between 50 and 70% were actually FFR negative which means that these lesions would not benefit from a PCI. And that's also what was confirmed in the DEFER trial, in which we learned that if you defer PCI in lesions with FFR above 0.75, these patients actually do very well and not better or worse as compared to medical therapy alone. Conversely, in lesions that are FFR positive, we learned from FAME2 that performing PCI in these lesions actually helps the patient to do better with less and lower numbers of maize up to one year and even longer term as compared to medical therapy alone. With respect to the technologies we currently have available, there are some issues there, I agree. I mean, there is a, a micro catheter based technology, there's pressure wire based technologies of different vendors. But the key problem is that, yeah, again, the, the, the introduction already uh, suggested it, it it's, these are all invasive technologies. So there's a need for a specific device that comes with a specific price. There's a need for instrumentation of the coronary artery, which, which might have risks. Uh, and then there is the need for hyperemic agents uh, like adenosine or papaverin, which, uh, which are associated with, uh, with side effects that might pose a burden to the patient. And finally, uh, we know that in these days, more and more patients have multivessel disease. So you might be willing to, to assess more vessels or even perform an FFR or physiological lesion assessment after the PCI. And recurrent wire-based technologies, that, that might be difficult. The wire might get damaged during the course of the procedure. And the pullbacks even might call drift, as yeah, you've nicely showed in your, uh, your assessment that drift and dampening of pressure waveforms really might jeopardize the, uh, the validity of the, uh, of the findings. Good thing, though, is that these days there are alternatives for invasive FFR. And Ziyut, why don't you enlighten us on what is, uh, what is coming up? Well, sure. Well, of course, probably what made the biggest splash was CTFFR and the heart flow technology. I, I think that really kicked off this area of a non-invasive physiological assessment. Uh, so as you know, CTFFR is a technology which uses the CT outside the cath lab to determine whether a lesion is physiological significant, not only giving you anatomy based on the CT, but physiology. But for cath lab based technology, we didn't have that. And now we finally do. And geography based FFR is a relatively too new technology starting about 2015 that's gained a lot of traction and has actually developed a lot of scientific evidence over a relatively short period of time. And angiography-based FFR is exactly what it says on the box. It's an angiogram, which allows you to model the FFR. And the validation of these angio-based FFR studies has been really very quick. We're probably somewhere around 3,000 patients if you combine the patients together. And now we're actually even uh, getting to a sensitivity and specificity around the 90% mark. And now we're at the point, Yost, where I think we're starting to look at individual lesion subsets like bifurcations and left mains. So I think overall, the utility of angio-based FFR, the evidence is actually very good. On that note, Yost, why don't you tell us a little bit about the FAST2 study and what the results were? I know this is something that's come up you know, very recently, and I'm, I was excited to be a part of it. Uh, why don't you help us understand it? Yeah, so FAST2 was a, uh, actually the next step forward towards a multi-center validation of the CAS VFFR technology, uh, but in this case as used by a blinded core lab and by uh, individual operators in, uh, in six sites across uh, EU, Japan, and the uh, US. So FAST2 was a prospective multi-center observational trial uh, in which we attempted to validate uh, physiological lesion assessment based on the angiogram using VFFR 
as compared to FFR as a reference. So over the past two years, we enrolled 334 cases in these, uh, in these six institutions. And what we found actually is that we found a very high diagnostic accuracy of, of VFFR to predict uh, invasive pressure wire based FFR. We found positive negative predictive values and accuracy of 90% and sensitivity and specificity figures of 81 and 95% respectively for VFFR as determined by a independent core lab to uh, identify uh, positive lesions as uh, defined by FFR. And the good thing is that that was also confirmed by uh, individual site operators in which we found that the uh, inter-observer variation in between the core lab and the sites was actually very low. So meaning that the technique actually works quite well, both when used by individual operators in the site, as opposed to a very well-trained and uh, blinded core lab. So with that, Ziad, what do you think is the impact of, FAST2, for, of the FAST2 study for the future of VFFR? Well, first of all, I'm glad that FAST2 really replicated the results of previous studies showing the validity uh, of, of angio-based FFR. But what FAST2 really signifies for me is you can use something that's really very simple to use in the cath lab. The advantage to me of the VFFR system over some of the alternative angiography-based systems is it's really super simple. It's just looking at the angiogram, clicking a bunch of buttons. It doesn't require a lot of manipulation. You don't have to be ultra trained. And then ultimately what it does is it provides you a very quick assessment of physiology. And the question always is, whenever you wanna change any technology is, you know, is it easier? Is it faster? Is it safer? Is it more comfortable for the patient? Is it cheaper? Can it be versatile? And, and, and finally, I think the last question that we ask ourselves is, is there robust clinical evidence? And now we're answering all of these with angio-based FFR. And, and the fact that VFFR makes this simple and has an easy workflow, I think this is going to be highly impactful. And to be honest, Joost, I, I think that invasive physiology-based FFR is really going to be a niche technique where it's being used mostly for specific areas of assessment of the, of the circulation, for example, the microcirculation. Um, but this is a welcome change, and I think that it's going to make a major impact on interventional cardiology. Yeah. yeah, I couldn't agree more, Ziad. I mean, the uh, the software really works very easy. You just need two angiograms, which uh, which can be important in the software directly. There's no need for doing a assessment of the full coronary tree. There's no need for frame counting. The, uh, the contour detection is, is is very fast and accurate, and for many people familiar because they use the same technology for QCA. The software automatically determines the optimal frame based on the EKG cycle. And now with the input of the blood pressure, you get your VFR instantaneously. And I think that even when we implemented here in our lab, the technicians were very well and very fast up to speed in, in using it. So I fully agree with you that these, uh, that these technologies have a great potential in replacing at least a significant amount of the invasive physiological lesion assessment uh, we're doing at the moment. Um, and in terms of the body of evidence, uh, I agree. I mean, there's now software from multiple vendors being tested with very consistent results in terms of sensitivity and specific figures, as you already alluded to. Uh, and also the body of evidence is, is, is still accruing. So we validated the results of FAST1 and FAST Extend and FAST2. And we're very happy to announce that we're now embarking in a large multi-center randomized outcome study uh, very much in line with uh, with competing work being done by uh, by Medes in the favor studies. <clears throat> so also in terms of uh, of outcome, I think we are uh, well on track to make this technology uh, something that uh, that could potentially have an important role in the next guidelines. Well, Joost, it was fun uh, to see you this morning and talk about angio-based FFR. And I'd leave the take home message for people to really just try this. It's very easy, very simple. And we know that physiological assessment improves outcomes. And why don't we all do that? All right. Thank you for watching and enjoy the rest of the course. Bye-bye.